Hello everyone and welcome to a special bonus episode. I'm Gabe, and today we'll be fixing a serious problem that Pokemon has had since the beginning. The type chart. We're going to look at how incredibly unbalanced it is and the method that I use to fix it. We'll go over the type's new strengths and weaknesses, and finally end with one more incredibly important additional change to the type chart. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. The type chart is broken. Anyone who is telling you otherwise either has Pokemon they love who benefit from it, or just don't realize how skewed it actually is. But for the most part, we can all agree that types like Grass, Bug, and Ice are just objectively not as good as, say, Steel or Fire. But exactly how broken are things? Well, I jumped into Google Sheets and did some spreadsheet magic! By throwing in a handful of very simple functions, I was able to create a type chart that I could modify and it would automatically update each type's offensive, defensive, and overall goodness. Mathematically, I landed on valuing different factors like this. Being able to deal super effective damage gives a positive 1 value. Having something resist your attack is a negative 1. And if something is immune to your attack entirely, that adds a negative 2 to the value. And of course, these numbers are also used from a defensive perspective as well. Pokemon battles are an incredibly complicated and nuanced set of interactions, so I did play with altering those numbers just to see how much it changed things. You know, maybe a super effective attack is 1, but a resisted attack is negative 1 half, and immunity is negative 1? I looked at a few different options, but they rarely changed the results that much. In general, the numbers only fluctuated by like one half in either direction. For the sake of this process, we'll be sticking with the 1, negative 1, negative 2 values. Now of course, that's not quite the end of it. There are two more factors to take into consideration. These are a little less numerically rigid, but do help fine-tune the final results. First off, we need to acknowledge that some types get additional advantages in battle. Steel types can't be poisoned, electric types can't be paralyzed, flying types get to avoid all those pesky entry hazards, and some types just don't get anything. After that, we're going to look at the best types and how the lower level types fare against them. For instance, the steel typing is flying high above everything else, but any type that is particularly good against steel is going to rise higher in the usability. And that leaves us with a final approximate score for each type. Anyone who has played the games shouldn't be too surprised by the results. Steel type is just overpowered, mainly due to the overabundance of resistances. And even when I tweaked the values in the chart, it didn't change too much. Steel type was always number one by a wide margin. After that, we've got types that are just fantastic. You know, fire, water, ground, flying, ghost, and of course, fairy. These types just have more working for them than against them. Next, we have our types that are good. Just good. You know, electric, fighting, poison, rock, dark, and dragon. I mean, I was expecting dragon to be a little higher, and it probably should be since those Pokemon tend to have significantly higher base stat totals. And then there's our bad types. Normal, Ice, Psychic, and then Grass and Bug sitting way at the bottom. Again, there should be no real surprise here. It's just a bummer to see, especially if anyone is partial to, you know, Grass or Bug types. How are we going to fix things? Well, we're going to make a new blank type chart and start plugging in numbers and let the functions take care of the rest. All we're aiming for is to have all the types end up with the same total. Ideally, we keep the interactions that are logical or thematic and remove any that just don't make any sense. Like, like, why the heck does Steel resist psychic or flying attacks? What's up with that? Now, rather than going through the long, arduous process of me filling out the table and balancing things, we're just going to talk about the results for each type. Oh, and... To help balance things further, every type will get a battle effect, just like, you know, Steel's immunity to poison. First up, we have the good old reliable normal type. 
One of its greatest flaws is that it isn't able to hit anything for super effective damage. We're going to fix that while also chipping away at another powerhouse type, the fairy type. Taking a page straight out of Peter Pan and other fairy stories, we're going to have our plain and boring normal type kill some fairies by simply saying, I don't believe in fairies, and nobody will be clapping to bring the fairies back. The normal typing is going to get a little more character because of this, as it will signify the ordinary, you know, a lack of magic and a refusal of the fantastical. So, it is now able to hit fairies for super effective damage while resisting fairy attacks. Normal and ghost types still won't be able to hit each other, and we're also adding one more weakness. Psychic will be able to invade the untrained minds of normal types. And lastly, its battle effect is that it will be immune to the curse effect. This was difficult to decide on, and it's probably the least good battle effect, which is maybe okay for the normal type. Fire remained largely unchanged with two small tweaks. Fire used to resist fairy type moves, but we're going to swap this so it can do super effective damage to fairies instead. The logic still stays the same, fire burns the natural world and fey creatures are tied to nature, but in general, during this rebalancing, I'm trying to lower the overall number of interactions and especially cut back on the number of resistances. The other change is boosting the dragon typing by giving it an immunity to fire. And, and we'll get to the reasoning behind that when we reach the dragon type. The fire type's battle ability is to be immune to burn. Now, you may have noticed that it has a little star by it. That means that there's another type that shares this same ability. And if a Pokemon is dual type with both, it gets a slightly better version of it. So in this case, a fire dragon type, instead of being immune to burn, it can now be burned, but it doesn't have to worry about losing attack or HP. It essentially keeps it from acquiring another status condition. Water is mostly unchanged. It is, however, going to lose its resistance to ice. This never really made sense to me. Oh, and it's also going to gain a weakness to poison types. This was one of the most obvious changes to make on the whole chart. Of course, water should be weak to poison. Oh, and lastly, for a battle effect, water types now regain a small amount of HP in the rain weather condition. Probably 1 16th of max HP, like the leftovers item. Wrapping up the starter types, we've got the grass type. I love grass types, and I was so happy to give it the love that it needed. It had so many types resisting it that just didn't really make sense. Fire resisting grass, sure, that makes sense. But all the rest of the grass resistances gotta go. Like, Dragon, why are you resisting grass? Get, get out of here with that. I mean, I wish I had been able to keep poison resisting grass, that kind of makes sense, but it also just didn't end up working out when rebalancing the chart as a whole. It also loses its resistances to grass and electric attacks, but loses its weakness to flying. I mean, I get it. Birds can land on trees and eat leaves, I guess, but like everything eats leaves, so that's always been a dumb reason. Its battle effect is remaining the same, so that's immunity to leech seed and all powder moves. The electric type needed some minimal changes. Defensively, it is in exactly the same place, but offensively, Rock types now resist electric, but it is able to hit steel types for super effective damage since metals are so conductive. Its battle effects stay the same, you know, remaining immune to paralysis. Ah, the ice type. Yet another one that needed some serious help. Oh, and for a lot of this reasoning, we'll be treating the ice type less as the frozen water type and more the embodiment of frigid temperatures. Because of that, it is no longer resisted by water or steel, but it no longer hits ground types for super effective damage. From what I understand, the reasoning is that ice types would freeze over the ground so that nothing could grow, but they're ground types, you know, not grass types, so what do they care? Yeah, never made sense, so it's gotta go. Also, defensively, it's gaining a resistance to the flying type. 
The reasoning here is a little weaker and it was primarily due to table balancing. The battle effect is the same, so being immune to hail damage and the frozen condition. Fighting type. Offensively, it never really made sense for fairy or bug to resist fighting, so those have to go. Defensively, that means it doesn't resist bug in return, but it loses its weakness to fairy types, which I, again, never understood. Fighting types are often tied to justice and order, so why would the goodness of fairy types be super effective against them? Yeah, so that's just gonna be normal damage. Oh, and for its battle effect, we're going to make the fighting type immune to both flinch and taunt uh, due to their, you know, combat prowess. Poison had a lot of reworking. It is now super effective against water and bug types, which makes sense. Instead of ground resisting poison, psychic will. And defensively, it's losing its weakness to ground, since again, their connection was dubious to start. But it no longer resists fairy. The battle effect is the same, immunity to poison, but if a Pokemon is poison and steel type, it can be poisoned again, but it will gain one-sixth of its HP instead of losing it. Ground. Right away, ground has a bunch of offensive changes. It doesn't get to hit poison, rock, or steel for super effective damage anymore. I never understood the connection between ground and poison, so that's gotta go. And ground being good against rock and steel? Is, is that because sand can cover those things? I mean, that's what I've always heard as an explanation, and I hate it so much. And bug, at least, isn't going to be resisting ground anymore. Ground type does lose its rock and poison resistances in turn, but also loses its ice weakness. And lastly, it will resist fire. Its battle effect is an immunity to sandstorm damage, but then a rock and ground type Pokemon will not only resist sandstorm, but it will gradually gain HP, 1 16th each turn. Flying type is very straightforward. It is no longer going to hit grass types for super effective damage to help that type out. It's also no longer going to be resisted by steel, since why would steel resist flying? So dumb. But ice types will resist flying instead. Defensively, it's just not going to resist grass types anymore. And of course, it still gets to ignore all the entry hazards and other ground-based attacks. Going into this, I did not realize how much help Psychic actually needed. First off, why is Steel resisting Psychic? What? Steel, come on! I mean, that's gotta go. It makes more sense for the bug type to resist Psychic, since, you know, their insectoid brains are so different. On the contrary, it is now able to hit normal types for super effective damage, since, you know, they're so smart and normal types are so normal. Leaning into the intelligence of the Psychic type, we're going to really stretch our reasoning to balance the chart, and have the Psychic type hit Fairy type for super effective damage. This is the weakest connection on the whole chart. But let's just say, I don't know, Psychic type's superior reasoning lets them see through the childish fairy stories and fables. I don't know, that one was tough. If you have a better reasoning for why Psychic is good against Fairy, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. I could use the help. Oh, and the Psychic type gets to be immune to confusion attacks. Oh, but we'll say it can still get confused if it uses a move like Outrage that confuses itself. The Bug type also needed a lot of love. There were a ton of types that resisted it, kind of just like Grass type. So now, Bug type will be able to hit Fighting, Ghost, Fire, Steel, and Fairy for normal damage. It's not gaining any additional super effective attacks, but getting rid of those other types' pesky resistances does a lot. Defensively, there's also a lot to change. Bug was weak to Fire because Fire burns bugs, I guess? Well, you know, Fire burns everything, so that's dumb. No longer weak to Fire. Same goes for Rock. Not weak to Rock either. Bug no longer resists grass, fighting, or ground, though. And it's weak to poison. For its battle effect, we're gonna make it so that bug types are immune to all binding moves. 
since they can just, like, wriggle out of those attacks. Rock type. Rock no longer hits bug for super effective damage, we covered that, but ground types no longer resist rock. The rock type does lose its resistances to normal and fire types, but gains a resistance to the electric type. Oh, and it loses its weakness to ground, and it shares the same battle effect with a ground type, so it's immune to sandstorm damage, and if it's a rock ground type, it regains HP in a sandstorm instead. Ghosts. Very little to change about the ghost type. The fairy type now resists it, and the ghost type loses its resistance to bug type. Plus, it retains its current battle effect, being immune to recall and escape blocking effects. Yeah, ghost types, they're ghost types, they're good to go. Dragon type. Offensively, guess what? Steel is gonna lose another one of its nonsensical resistances. You know, I get it. You could say that it's the sword slaying the dragon, but we need to bump steel down and bring dragon up. So, no resistance there. Other than that, the offenses are exactly the same. Defensively, it no longer resists grass. This made no sense, especially when you think of the fairy type as being tied to nature, so, so neutral damage from grass types. But the dragon type is gaining an immunity to the fire type. This is to continue playing up the reptilian weakness to ice, along with referencing how in many cultures dragons can breathe fire anyway. Oh, and like the fire type, its battle effect is to be immune to burn. Oh, and, you know, a fire dragon type can get burned, but nothing negative happens. We went over that. Dark type. I did not realize until I had finished, but the dark type is the only type that I did not end up making a single change to. When I was filling out the chart, it all remained the same, including the battle effect, which is being immune to the effects of the prankster ability. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Good job, dark type. Steel. Okay. Time to fix the entitled problem child. The only resistances it gets to keep are rock, steel, and fairy. While getting hit for super effective damage by fire, electric, and fighting. But at least it isn't weak to ground anymore, I guess. Oh, and offensively, it's the same, except for it doesn't get to hit ice types for super effective damage anymore. And again, that's because our ice typing is less about being frozen water and more about being frigid temperatures. It shares its battle effects with the poison type, so poison immunity, and the dual type of those two again regains HP when poisoned. The fairy type got a total overhaul. Now, it doesn't hit fighting types for super effective damage, we covered that, but it does hit ghost types. And then, it is no longer resisted by fire and poison, but is resisted by the normal type. Defensively, it no longer resists fighting or bug attacks, but does resist ghost. But it is now, of course, getting beat up by the normal type, psychic type, and fire types. Oh, and its battle effect is an immunity to infatuation. And there it is, the new type chart. It took a lot of time, but we wound up with something that is actually pretty balanced. Or at the very least, far, far, far more balanced than the current type chart. But what do you think? Are there any changes that you just can't get behind? Or are there any tweaks that you agree are just obvious fixes to make? Let me know down in the comments below. Oh, and making a table like I did is actually super easy. I encourage you to give it a try for yourself. Oh, but before you run away and do that, at the beginning of this very long video, I mentioned one more change I was going to make to the type chart. So when you have a dual type Pokemon, their weaknesses and resistances interact in fun ways. Most of which I want to keep the same, right? A weakness and a resistance canceling each other out? Yeah. That makes sense. An immunity canceling all damage, regardless of it being paired with a resistance or a weakness? Sure, why not? Two resistances leading to only taking one-fourth damage? Yeah, great, perfect. But two weaknesses combining to take four times damage? I think that's where we need a change. I propose that two weaknesses leads to taking three times damage. On first glance, the four times damage seems to make sense. 
2 times and 2 times equals 4 times, right? But mathematically, it leads to an imbalance in how much overall damage is being taken across all attacking types compared to another balanced dual type without overlapping weaknesses. So yeah, 2 weaknesses equals a 3 times modifier. And that's it. No type chart is going to be perfect, and there are always going to be certain dual type combinations that are better than others, but I think we fixed a lot of the glaring problems with the Pokemon type chart. A huge thank you to anyone who watched all the way through this whole video. Please be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and I would love to hear your thoughts on the type chart down in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!